Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Visitors from the other side. And the other side in our frame of reference is neither the Jordan or the Rubicon, but commercial radio and television. The fact that WNYC is the only non-commercial, municipally owned radio station in the United States does not prevent us from inviting people from the other side. Uh, so each week at this time, we bring you a personality from commercial radio or television. What is your name? And our guest has the opportunity of speaking without commercial restrictions, and our listeners have the pleasure of hearing him from a new vantage point. We're not so sure about our guest today. You may hear him from the same vantage point. But he's Imus, Imus in the morning, as he's known at WNBC, where he holds forth in the morning. Uh, Imus... Can yeah. we call you Don? Uh, it, are you known as Don at all? No. I, and you can't call me Don because <laughs> you wouldn't use my Banaka breast spray. <laughs> so Dentally, folks, Banaka is available now in a new concentrated golden breast spray, and it comes in a little canister, and you can put it in your pocket and <laughs> give yourself a shot. And, oh, you see, without commercial restrictions, uh, we... Do not spray near eyes. Do not <laughs> puncture incinerator or store container. Uh, Imus, where did, where, what city uh, did you come from before you came to New York City? Uh, I was from, uh, I spent a year in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, did you do the same kind of program? No, I was a truck driver, you <laughs> dummy. Of course I did the same kind of program. <laughs> this is what Imus is like. No, uh, it's I'm, not. I, I'm a very warm person, except when I'm pushed. Imus I'm, has a... I'm has treated a, terrible out in the reception room. You have a match. Um. We don't smoke at WNYC, Imus. No, uh, no. <laughs> well, we can't even yeah. advertise them, can we, anymore? You, so. Imus has a red, white, and blue shirt on with stars. Uh, it's American and his white eyes, shirt. He's got stars in his eyes also. Uh, <laughs> but he's a likable chap. Not that breast um, spray, folks. <laughs> I must, you're on, what hours are you on WNBC? In case someone uh, who's never heard you might want to listen to you. According to the Pulse, there's a lot of people that haven't heard us. <laughs> Don't believe those are, things, I mean. <laughs> Who's Pulse? Yeah, that's true. All right. You're on at what time? Six to ten. Six to ten in the morning. And is that... Uh, does that include Saturday? No, on Saturday we do a show called uh, The Best of Imus in the Morning. That was the title that I picked, uh, modestly. Uh -huh. And um, I'm on from 8 to noon. On Saturday. And then we repeat all of the uh, zany, hilarious things that we had done from the week before. And then Sunday is your day of rest. That is the day that I heal. <laughs> I see. If we can get Imus to concentrate for a moment or so, uh, we, we, do, we, we do want to talk about his format. He has a... Uh, uh, he is warm, and what he's saying here is no reflection of, I'm sure, of his real personality. Uh, those hostile things he's saying to us, I mean. Uh, oh, I, <laughs> I mean every word of it. <laughs> well, Imus has a, a talent contest uh, in which he invites listeners to, uh, as a matter of fact, they can telephone. What's the number that uh, they call for the, uh, to get on your talent contest? Uh, Plaza 78866. Plaza 78866. It's called the Columbus School of 101 Showbiz Careers Live Auditions. And you, if you call that number, and if you have some kind of talent, do you, do you accept any kind of talent? Well, we really prefer people um, more consistent with the, with the people that are making it in showbiz today, and, and that would be those that didn't have any talent. As evidenced by, <laughs> well, look at you with your own show here. I, you know, you got about as much business doing this as Perry well, Bascom does. Well, can I call Plaza 78866 and, and, and be auditioned? I really, uh, I, I... I mean, I, I would fit into that category. Yes, you, yes, you would. Right? Yeah. So, I, okay, I can call Plaza 78866. And then when I call that, what happens? I say, hello, I must, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to... Well, see, we only do it uh, once a morning. And it, it, it's at various times. Sometimes it's between... Well, you know, six and seven, sometimes it's after nine. Just depends on when I feel like doing it. It's inconsistent. Yeah. <laughs> Much like this show. Right. And I invite people to call, see, uh, that want to audition. And then I have a certificate. I wish I should have brought one with me. Well, we can get one later. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, then I invite them to do things. And um, the, the best kind of things to do are, are, are things that need to be visual because they're just that much sillier mm -hmm. on the radio. You know? But you have them say a phrase. Uh, the, the, they have to say, uh, there's some phrase you give them to say. What is that? Oh, I just ask them if they want to be a truly beautiful person and, and are willing to, uh, you know, perhaps be caught in a motel in Indio, California in a compromising position with uh, 
Annette from the cello and Bobby Duran. <laughs> you a Gideon Bible in one hand and a road map in the other. In addition, though, you you get someone on who calls you and say, "I'm I want to audition. I want to be a, a disc jockey, mm -hmm. and I want to be this." And you, well, I had Dan Ingram call me as a matter of fact. <laughs> Did uh, you give him the audition? Uh, no, I didn't, because. Uh, well, I just didn't use that. But what is that phrase? You tell them to say, there's, there's, a, there's a whole phrase that you give them to say. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I don't even know what you're... Do you know what he's talking about? No, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> the, now, you, you uh, uh, have been in New York now. How much I'll... longer do we have? 25 <laughs> minutes. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a sample of uh, Imus in the morning oh, uh, that you can get I here. Don't leave uh, anyone In the out. afternoon. I mean... Uh, now, I, uh, Imus, what else? Uh, you, you play a lot of good music, though. Uh, there's a redeeming factor about Imus, uh, I mean, I I in his show. You play, do you pick all, all of that music? Oh, well, um, no, it's, it's programmed by, um, by um, we have a record librarian that, uh, that handles all of that, and the station has kind of a format, and the format is that we play about 40 of the best of the current things uh, and I, you know we're not right out rock and roll but we're certainly not a middle of the road station you know an old people station like uh, WNEW or <laughs> WHN or WOR uh, a has been radio station we're not like them right NBC is climbing but the uh, thing we so do sure. we play a lot of oldies that's what I noticed you play all yeah. those old songs one uh, every other one is an oldie and they're all things uh, let's start with 1955, and and um, a lot of the things that are you familiar with Gus Gossett's show? You you played I've seen fire, I've seen rain. You were singing that this morning, was I? Yeah, I've mm -hmm. seen fire, I've seen rain. No, yeah. but that was an unusual version. That's why I wonder whether you picked. Well, your that was own James records. Taylor. Yeah, that's that was his. He he had the original. Did he? I didn't know. Oh that. yeah, he had uh, the hit on it. We see so we don't play any cover, and we don't play. Uh, you know, I want to hold your hand by Stephen Eady. We don't even play Stephen Eady. You know, we play Eady Gourmet's uh, Blame It on the Bossa Nova, and we play uh, Steve, uh, what's his face, uh, Portrait of My Love, mm. and a couple other things. But There's nothing there, but hits. Uh, hit I'm, after hit after hit. I must has a... They're all former boss hit mounts. Has another don't unique style. Don't let me interrupt style. you. That's all right. Another unique style. Uh, I don't know how you do this, and I suppose I'll never find out now, yeah. but <laughs> when he talks, he... He leaves out words sometimes, and I don't know whether that's a mechanical defect of NBC or whether that's uh, Imus. Uh, like he will be saying uh, the other, uh, and then there's another word that comes in. Do you, how, how do you do that? I don't know. I do it on purpose, so um, because in that way they think a lot of people it gets their attention. They think there's something wrong with the radio. <laughs> and, um, there's morning, really something wrong with Imus. <laughs> yeah, this morning we did a thing that was kind of unique. Uh, we were playing a record scene and. Uh, we were going to be 10, 10 seconds short going in, into the uh, news on the hour. See? Oh. I told the engineer, I said, hey, stop the thing for 10 seconds. But don't, you know, just we'll have 10 seconds of silence. So we did. He just stopped the cart and then started it again. And uh, the general manager came running in <laughs> and got the chief engineer. And I guess they must have spent a half an hour. They were just hissed at what, and they couldn't understand what was wrong. And I didn't, never, they never asked me, so I never say anything. <laughs> it, it, but we, it gets people's attention, that's right. Right. They hear silence and they come to attention. Yeah. What other, do you, you have other segments on the program, and you're on from 6 in the morning until 10, and you have this talent contest, and then there's something else that you do. I have a bunch of characters. Uh, one character is the, uh, called the Right Reverend Dr. Billy Saul Hargis, who, uh, has, a, has his own church called the First Church of the Gooey Death and Discount House of Worship. In Discount House of Worship in that you may make a $5 donation for three ninety eight, <laughs> but but you get credit for the entire $5. He also has a uh, an amusement park, uh, America's only religious amusement park. You know, it's not one of those uh, pilgrim traps or, or something. It is a, a genuine uh, amusement park called Holy Land, and it is in... Um, Del Rio, Texas, and it features all of the neat things you read about in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a holy martyr rack and uh, the the, uh, uh, the giant uh, whirl of whip and the, uh, the stone the painted lady booth, <laughs> where you can buy three stones for a quarter and do the brought in. And then uh, he's also, but his main thing is he sells things. This morning he was selling. Uh, you always, you know how you've always seen pictures of him, and his hair is never messed up. Mm -hmm. 
Did you and did you ever wonder why? Now I have. Yeah. Well, it's because uh, he used what you can use in your very own home, according to Billy Saul, and then this dry control by Hebrew Talus. <laughs> um, also has. Uh, Do you get many calls from clerics? Well, many of them understand uh, that it's a satirization of not Christianity or any or any other kind of mm -hmm. religion, but a satirization of of these evangelists that are ripping people off by you know what, what you know their act. I don't want to. Well, I like Oral Roberts and some mm -hmm. of those creeps, you know. Then <laughs> I mean, I don't know that Oral Roberts is ripping people off, but you know, you, uh, well, there's a the, the famous. But, you know, one. there are guys that are. The real famous one. Uh, Billy Graham? Yeah. I don't think he's ripping people off, really. I think he's a straight dude. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I personally admire him. Mm. Uh, the, the, uh, Billy Saul Hargis has a voice very similar to Billy Graham's, but that's simply because it's identifiable, you know. But I, I, th I think he's, I, you know, whether you, whether you buy that act or not, um, y you know, at least he's not healing people and making blind people see and that kind of mm -hmm. boogie woogie, you know. Now we have a character called um, Judge Hangen, who is uh, sounds an awful lot like John Connolly or Lyndon Johnson, and he is a guy that um, that missed out on the Supreme Court, you know, by a tree or a mm -hmm. shrub, uh, and and he believes that, as he often says, the law is our friend, and anyone who hurts our friend should be beaten senseless. And he, for example, feels that we should conduct the 72 elections much like they did in South Vietnam, in that President Nixon should have no opposition. <laughs> well, it, it really, it worked pretty good there, and it would work especially well here because you wouldn't have them taking up so much TV time. You wouldn't have any stupid predictions by a lot of TV guys, you know, and uh, there wouldn't be very little campaign spending and stuff, and uh, it would all be over very quickly. 